As we all know, the U.S. runs a service economy, but that doesn't mean that we have no industry or that industry is not uh, important. It's 40% of GDP, and it's about a quarter of energy use, and it employs about 20% or so of our workers and is rich, diverse, and powerful. At RMI, we think a lot about industrial efficiency and how it competes in the marketplace for industrial capital. Because efficiency is so reliable, it really shouldn't be competing with research on new products. Unfortunately, it does in many cases, but it's very reliable. It's a bond for the treasurer of the company. The industrial sector uses a lot of energy. Over 90% of that energy uh, derives from fossil fuels. Three-fifths of it is from uh, directly burned fossil fuels and two-fifths of their primary energy use is from electricity. And as we know, the majority of that comes from fossil fuels as well. We would argue that, frankly, many forms of efficiency are not a risk. They just take a rethinking of what's important to the company and what improves it, its competitive position. It's a leadership role in many cases, and it also is asking engineers to push beyond the entirely predictable to say, what's a new and better way to put things together? Our reinventing fire analysis shows a plausible path for an industrial sector that is 84% larger in 2050, yet uses 9% less energy than it does today. One of the magic things that can occasionally happen is when there is really a process breakthrough in a industrial facility that there is a really clean, simple answer which solves every problem at once. Uh, we say in Reinventing Fire that big savings can be cheaper than small. We realize that that doesn't happen all the time, uh, but there are occasions when there is a really clean, simple stroke uh, solution that actually takes out so much capital expenditure uh, and complexity. One of the levers that can help industry become more efficient beyond simply investing in efficient technologies is packaging those technologies together in the right way from a systems perspective and we call that integrative design. Integrative design simply means looking for system-wide efficiency opportunities, uh, employing trade-offs in one component against another so that uh, rather than improving the efficiency of those components in isolation, we can improve the efficiency of the entire system. Once you reduce the need for energy in the process, you can also go back upstream from there and look at the energy distribution system uh, in the plant. And, uh, through simple steps like adding insulation, um, straightening out pipes, you can reduce the energy needed to transport or distribute the energy within the facility. Uh, and then next, if you keep going upstream, you can improve the efficiency of the energy conversion step. Finally, when you've done all you can in those areas, uh, you can capture and reuse the waste heat. And that can be from uh, cogeneration, where you're generating electricity from high temperature or medium temperature waste heat, or it could be directly using uh, the process heat that's left over to preheat a stream somewhere. Industries that stay ahead of the curve, they need to embrace the change that's coming. Uh, try and diversify their product mixes or invest in their own energy efficiency or in changing the, the source of uh, their energy through uh, fuel switching or uh, other strategies to make themselves cleaner and more productive um, so that they are better insulated when change does come. There will be a strong U.S. manufacturing base in a wide variety of industries where it does make sense to be in the U.S from an economic point of view. And for those industries, uh, increasing their energy efficiency and their overall operational simplicity uh, using the energy and efficiency lens is immensely powerful. It's the least risky investment there is. If uh, fossil fuel prices go up and uh, the industrial uh, base therefore has an escalation in its costs, it hits the most efficient guy the least.